3. Balance the following equations. And then they give us this huge blob of something. So we have NH42 Cr2O7 solid, which will yield Cr2O3 solid plus N2 gas plus H2O gas. Okay. So as like the other ones, I like to rewrite them because they don't really give me any space here. So I'm just going to quickly just rewrite it down again. So I, I have NH42 Cr2O7 yields... And a yield is equivalent to just saying, you know, equal, or it will make the products. So I have this one compound, and it will break apart into these three individual compounds. So I have Cr2O3 plus N2 plus H2O. Now, if you've noticed, I haven't written the... the um, the states here because no one cares what state they are when you're balancing the equation. No one cares. It doesn't matter. <laughs> so I only care about what the, the compound is. Okay, so now that that's done, when we uh, are learning how to balance equations, what I always like to do is I always like to make a chart because once you start making the chart, as you get better and better, you won't need the chart anymore. It's kind of just like a little guidance tool. It's a two-tier chart. The, the left-hand side is always your reactants. Oh my goodness. Reactants. And the right-hand side is always products. Keep in mind that your reactants are always the left side, which is this side. It is everything that is to the left of this arrow. And the products are what you produce. It's always the right side of the arrow sign. Now, when we do this chart, we like to only write down the elements, not the compounds. So what I like to do is I like to just work from left to right. And I just like to write down the individual elements of what I have on the reactant side. So it looks like I have four elements here. I have a nitrogen, a hydrogen, a chromium, and an oxygen. So I'm just going to write that down. I have a nitrogen, a hydrogen, a chromium, and an oxygen. And what you write on this side, just replicate on your product side, just so that you have everything nice and neat. So I'm going to put my nitrogen up here, my hydrogen, my chromium, and my oxygen. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back, and I'm going to figure out how many of each I have. So I can start from the top, work my way down. Let's focus on nitrogen. Well, here's the nitrogen here. There's a two outside these parentheses, which means that this two will get multiplied by each guy in the parentheses. So I really have, there was one nitrogen here. One times two is two. I really have two nitrogens. And let's use that same rule for hydrogen. There was four hydrogens here, but times by two, there was a secret eight hydrogen. Well, not really a secret, but there's eight hydrogens. There are two chromiums. So I'll put that there. And then we have seven oxygens, right? So there you go. And now let's just figure out what we have on this side. So... Just make sure that, you know, you're matching up your elements with who you're talking about. So I'm going to go with nitrogen first. There's only one nitrogen here. It's in the middle. And there's a two here. So there's two nitrogens. Let's go for those hydrogens. There's only the hydrogen on this side. Two. So that means that there's only two. So I'm going to put a two here. Chromium, CR over here, there is two. So I'm going to put a two here. And then oxygens, let's see. There's an oxygen here and an oxygen here. So I literally have to add them together, literally plus add, right? So how many oxygens here? There's three plus one, right? 
is a total of four. So there was four oxygens. All right, now we just have to take a tally. Looks like the nitrogens are already balanced. Looks like the chromiums are already balanced. So I need to know how to balance the hydrogens and I need to balance the oxygens. Always balance first by multiplication and do the easy ones first. Like for example, with oxygen, right? Four times what will give me seven? Eh, not a good whole number, right? It's gonna be a decimal. But what about the hydrogens? Two times what will get me eight? Oh, two times four will get me eight. That number that you said, the four in this case, is going to be the coefficient. So if I put a four in front of the hydrogen on this side, you have to be fair. You have to multiply it by all of the elements of that compound. So I really have to change the hydrogen value and the oxygen value. Four times two is eight, and that's exactly why we put the four there, because we wanted it to match. And now remember, this is a total, so let's see how many total oxygens I have. Remember, there's oxygens on two compounds on the product side. So there was three oxygens plus, how many now new oxygens here? Four. Three plus four is, oh, seven. Look at that. By balancing only one element, you balanced the other one as well. Look at that. Sometimes that's going to happen. Fingers crossed, hopefully that happens more than not. So all we had to do here was literally just put a four on this one, and now the whole thing is balanced. So even though sometimes it looks really, really, really scary and intimidating, it's really not. We just had to add like one number. So guys, what'd you think? Let me know in the comments if this helped you or not. Um, if you want, press the like button. You can subscribe which would help us out and get, you know, get out there that, you know, the service exists to all students all over the world. And that would be really, really crazy. That's a, that's a really, really cool concept. Thank you so much for that. And I'll see you guys all in the next lesson. Yeah. Have a great day. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.